Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, the next step in the series is actual real music theory. Uh, this is the major scale. So hopefully you've worked on um, getting yourself familiarized with the, uh, the fretboard and all the notes. And now uh, I'm gonna talk about the major scale. And the major scale, uh, if you don't learn any other scales, um, learn this one and know it um, you know, just like you, you know, know your social security number or your address or your name, um, because all other scales are are compared against this scale, right? So if you ever hear that the pentatonic scale, the diminished scale, the C, the you know, the melodic minor, the harmonic minor, the harmonic major, um, and those are some of the big ones. There are a whole ton of other scales. Um, and I'll, I'll recommend a book if you're interested in learning a bunch of scales, which eh, I'm not sure I would recommend, but if you want to see what they actually look like. But, um, you know, the pentatonic scale, the, the augmented scale, the diminished, all those other scales are um, are compared against um, the major scale for basically the formula of how, um, how you go uh, from one note to the other, okay? So... The formula for a major scale is a whole step followed by another whole step followed by a half step followed by three whole steps and then another half step. So from the root you go up two frets which is a whole step, right? Then you go up another two frets from the net the net, net note, one fret from the previous note, two steps from the note before that, two steps before the note from the note before that. Two steps from the note before that, and then one note, uh, step um, from that previous one. So on the guitar, the nice thing about this um, is this form is applies to any instrument, right? So if, since we're talking about guitar um, specifically, you know, in in this uh, on this channel and this in this series, is that a whole step is the distance between two notes that are exactly two frets apart, right? So from F to G, right? That's exactly uh, a whole step and um, if you're playing F on the um, the low E string that is the you know the note that's on the first fret right and if you want to go a whole step to G right you just go you skip another fret go up to the third fret and that's your whole step Likewise, if you're going a half step, right, and you're, you know, you're on F at the very, at the low, on the low E string on the first fret, and you want to go up a half step, that's just one fret apart. That's the next neighboring fret, so that's pretty easy. Now, the the application of of the the, the, the major scale, um, a lot of the times people use a C major scale as reference. Um, because I want to, it's not really, it's kind of abstract to just say, you know, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Um, you want to see the actual, what the actual notes, um, that are comprised of, you know, of, of the, of the major scale. So the easiest one, and most people start off with is, is the C major scale because the, in the key of C, um, there are no sharps or no flats and therefore the C major scale is exactly this. So if you start on C and you end on C, um, this is the, um, the C major scale. Now, if you remember from the Sound of Music, remember the, you know, the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, right? That's what it sounds like. So if I play the C major scale here, right, and go backwards. So you can kind of hear that, right? Um, and if we, we apply our our formula here, uh, whole, 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 half, right, and give it a little bit of space in between. Uh, so let's see the D, that's, uh, D, D, E, 
E, e, F, um, F to G, A to B, here, here. right? Now, this should work, but if we analyze it, let's go, let's, let's go and see here. C to D, according to the formula, should be a whole step, and it is. D to E should be a whole step, and it is. E to F should be a half step. Yep, there are no notes in between E and F. That is a half step. F to G should be a whole step. G to A should be a whole step. A to B should be a whole step, and then B to C should be a half step. So this is the the C major scale. The great thing on guitar is once you learned um, the major scale and like what the shape is, um, it's really easy to play the set, the major scale in um, in any other key because you're just basically transposing that shape um, up and down up and down the neck, right on the fretboard. So um, you know once you learn essentially how it looks it's in one key it's really really simple to do it in others um, however knowing the notes is um, that comprise the scale is, is probably more important because once you if you just learn um, a scale shape and let's say you're improvising or playing over that um, over some you know uh, some chord progression and all you know is what the what the what the scale shape looks like. You tend you're going to tend to play that scale shape, and then you're going to sound like you're just playing scales um, when you're improvising. When instead, um, if you know the notes that comprise um, the key you're in, then you can kind of navigate um, pretty much freely, um, you know, along the fretboard without actually having to play. You know, again, a scale. You know, starting at the root note and playing all the notes in between. Um, that's really what separates you know the the the, the amateur uh, player from the professional player. The play, the the professional player knows. Yeah, these are all the things that I can play within this uh, within this progression. But you know, um, you know, I have some melody in my head, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply that. And it's not really going to be a scale. Um, it's, he's just going to kind of know what. What the boundaries of the things that he can play and that and he and that he should be playing and what he shouldn't be playing, um, that really to me separates the great players from from the players that are really um, what I consider not so great. Okay, so anyway, um, so the cool thing is um, is that you can pretty much do this for any other um, for any other. Uh, a key right so there are 12 keys um, and I like what I'd like you to do is if you could is go ahead and figure out right this will be C this will be um, G minus circle of this D We won't worry about um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So um, I won't uh, ask you to do um, the other keys that are not uh, that are not naturals. You know, like the um, you know G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat. Um, those are a little bit more tricky, and I'll go in those, into those into the in the next. Um, video which will show you know what what the answers are but for this case um, what I'd like you to do is um, take this try to figure out what the notes are without you know cheating like looking it up on the on, you know, on a search Google search or whatever um, and just applying this 
whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half um, formula. So the easiest way to do it and not have to think about it too hard is if I'm going to um, figure out what the notes are in the G major scale, I'll start on G, right? And I'll go through all the notes we call diatonically and not worry about the sharps or flats or anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and apply this, sorry, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half formula here. Right? Don't worry about the sharps and flats. Just write out the naturals. Look at the formula and see if um, this interval here satisfies whether it should be a whole step or half step. So let's go G to A is a whole step. Yep, it is. A to B should be a whole step. Yep. B to C should be a half step. Yep, that is. C to D is a whole step. Yep. D to E should also be a whole step. E to F should be a whole step. Ooh. Okay, well, E to F is not a whole step. It's a half step. So what is the only way that we can get without breaking, you know, the relationships, you know, previously um, to get this to work? So the only way to get this to really work is that you're going to have to raise F a half step to F sharp. And then, ah, isn't that great? F sharp to G is a half step. So now this is satisfied right so it's basically the G major scale is G A B C D E F sharp and G right and if you've looked at how that's played on um, on the fretboard say if you looked at C right so here's C right if you looked at the shape if I actually just move that shape up to um, up a few frets, right? From say, if I'm playing at the uh, on the A string, starting at the third fret. If I decide to play on the same A string, but start on the tenth fret, that is the G major scale. Sounds easy enough? Well, let's uh, try that with, uh, with D. And I'm going to give you a hint. As we go up, the number of sharps are going to, is going to increase as well. So, <laughs> except when you get to F. So the hint on F is there is one flat. So D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and we apply our whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Formatted right. I got some hair there, uh, probably there. Right. Oops. 
Yeah, that's probably okay. So for D, right? D to E is a whole step. E to F is not a whole step. It's a half step. So what do we do? Well, if you want to make sure that D and E to E is still a whole step, we just raise this, right? And well, by magic, F sharp to G is a half step, right? So we satisfy this relationship here and this relationship here. G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. B to C. Oh, wow, that's not a whole step. That is a half step. Well, guess what? If we raise C to C sharp, um, we also satisfy C sharp to D as a half step, right? So B to C sharp is a whole step. C to D is a half step. And that's basically uh, as much as I'd like to do on this. Um, and if, if you can, try to figure out A, E, and B. Um, hint, uh, the number of sharps increases by one from the previous. And that's why I kind of laid this out the way it is. Um, but however, in F, there is one flat and only one flat. So if you can figure that out.